Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video uh, content if uh, you find what I provide every week useful. And um, if you're new to Trading 180, this is a combination and what I provide is a combination of fundamental analysis with technical analysis, supply and demand strategies to make the best trading uh, decisions. So let's get into the uh, the week ahead uh, on tradingeconomics.com. So uh, zooming in a little bit, one second. Um, it will be the busiest week of the summer for the US with the Federal Reserve decision, uh, second quarter GDP growth rate and earnings report uh, for more than a third of the S&P companies taking center stage. We're just focusing really on the, um, uh, the Fed decisions and second quarter uh, GDP growth rate. Also, Eurozone's largest economies, including Germany, France, uh, Italy and Spain, will be publishing key reports on growth and inflation. And uh, I definitely advise you guys to have a read of um, you know, the, the, the details uh, at tradingeconomics.com. Uh, if you click on the tab, it's the week ahead tab. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just go backwards a little bit. Yeah, so you should see if you're watching this, it should be in the uh, one of the first uh, top boxes that you'll see if you click on that week ahead, <clears throat> then you'll get then you'll get that. Anyways, uh, let's get into uh, some of the more in-depth uh, fundamentals and technical uh, levels, uh, looking at the dollar index. And the dollar index, dollars pull back a bit, so if we can zoom out, I'm always saying to uh, the guys in the uh, private members group, zoom out to see where you are, right? Because it gives you a, a much better perspective um, as to you know where fair value is, potential fair value is, and bargain prices are from a daily perspective. And um, and so what we have here, I think we might have broken that level. Yeah. So dollar index is just a measure of strength, um, uh, dollar strength against a basket of currencies. And um, uh, we finally pulled back really uh, as we as prices you know are predicted to. Um, to really, um, uh, I would say, uh, the, the, the monthly moving fair value, some traders would know that as just a moving average, uh, and that's an EMA and an SMA, simple moving average and an exponential moving average. But it's really understanding that a moving average is, um, is, is understanding an average is, is fair value, right? It's an average, uh, a mean, which is uh, in, in price terms and value terms is, is fair value. And uh, uh, 21 periods would be uh, 21 trading days um, in a month so that would be the monthly moving fair value and that's just telling you where fair value price is over the month right and so for me personally uh, I like to not necessarily buy uh, look to buy if prices are above um, uh, uh, fair value because that would indicate that prices in an expensive area right so I want to see price kind of come down to the uh, at least the monthly uh, moving fair value before really establishing um, um, some some uh, some some buy trades or sell trades, of course, and on the uh, dollar index has come down uh, this week, so decent buying opportunity uh, for any kind of uh, dollar trades. If you're looking to still get bullish, you're still bullish on the dollar, which I actually am, regardless of the potential negative headlines uh, that are occurring. So. Um, We've had uh, this headline, which is U.S. Uh, business activity contracts for the first time since 2020. So U.S. business activity contracted in July for the first time in more than two years as manufacturers and service providers signal sluggish demand that only adds to heightened recession anxieties. The S&P Global Flash Composite uh, Purchasing Managers Output Index slid 4.8% to seven, uh, sorry, 47.5, um, the weakest reading since May 2020. Uh, the group reported on Friday. Outside of uh, the early months of the pandemic, the July figure is the weakest in data back to 20, uh, 2009. Sorry, Readings below 50 indicate contraction. The first, uh, the new orders uh, gauge ex expanded modestly after contracting the previous month. So it's not looking fantastic for the, uh, for the dollar at the moment. Uh, there is uh, contraction um, obviously in a uh, business activity um, which is basically just a sign um, it's not you know the US is going into a recession and also as well you have to compare um, when looking at Forex pairs um, 
uh, both currencies, right? So yes, you might be wanting to sell the dollar, but is Europe better than the dollar? Is the you know the UK better than uh, the dollar? So uh, in my opinion, it's not. And this isn't tr financial trading advice. This is just um, you know my opinion. And I think the dollar um, should still want to, um, at least in the short term, um, still strengthen over at least those two um, uh, economies and currencies. And uh, we also have uh, Powell as well seen slowing Fed's uh, hikes after 75 basis point ne next week. So surveyed economists see a big uh, July increase in a downshift. So rates may peak at 3.75% in February and then decline. So um, uh, hiking rates generally is and typically is... Um, uh, appreciates a currency um, and but you would need really the economy to show that um, you know to support those hikes now at the moment um, the economy um, is supporting those hikes when it comes to the uh, uh, the, the US economy um, and I think for me the uh, again the US is in a better place um, economically than um, a lot of the other um, uh, economies, major economies like Europe and the uh, <clears throat> and and the UK, but Federal Reserve uh, Chair Jerome Powell is likely to slow the pace of interest rate increases after front-loading policy with a second straight 75 basis point next week. Economists uh, surveyed by Bloomberg said. So um, again, the market is more forward-thinking. So uh, the 75 basis points has pretty much been priced in anything. Uh, less than that would be probably a, a shock or anything more than that was going to be definitely a surprise uh, to the market. So um, a pullback on that dollar, I think, um, is, is decent and uh, allows really uh, decent buying opportunities uh, before uh, the news is, is released. So um, let's see, uh, you know, really how that plays out. But for me, um, uh, at least in the short term to medium term, I'm still bullish on the dollar. So um, how that plays out using the, uh, the dollar index is really looking for any kind of uh, demand zones uh, as confluence with any buying of the dollar um, uh, on dollar crosses like the dollar yen, for example, if you want to be a buyer of the dollar against the yen. If, if you don't have it, it doesn't really matter so much um, but always, it's always good to look at the dollar index as a uh, um, uh, from a bigger picture and seeing what the dollar is doing against other currencies. Looking at the dollar yen, um, uh, dollar yen, it was due a pullback, right? I was saying that this is, you know, pretty um, expensive when you consider, uh, you know, the dollar over the past, you know, year to date. If you look at where we are, this is an absolute bargain for the dollar. Look at, look at that, the 115s, um, and now you're seeing obviously, uh, you know, prices trend higher. This was due to uh, fundamental divergences. Um, you know, you can look back, you know, it's not hindsight bias really if you understand that hiking rates should have um, a positive effect. And I say positive, but appreciative effect on the um, on the dollar. And really the, um, the Bank of Japan have, have been very uh, dovish. So you're seeing that, you know, really kind of play out. Prices have pulled back now, in fact, you know, to below the uh, uh, monthly moving fair value. And now it's back into uh, some decent, um, a bargain of potential bargain prices so um, I'm looking to now establish uh, some potential long trades here um, against uh, the uh, the yen but let's see what happens if you are looking to get short on that um, on the yen then there is uh, some supply here uh, that you could look towards uh, shorting uh, the dollar and buying the yen you'd really have to believe that the yen is a bargain up at these prices um, for me, I think the yen is it definitely would be a, um, start to look like a, an even uh, better bargain uh, above the 140s. But I think down here um, on a pullback, um, I think the dollar is still a potential buy. So uh, looking at these levels here, the 135s, 134s as um, as, um, as entry points uh, on, on lower time frames if I can get it. Um, looking at the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss. Um, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade, but I do think that this zone is decent, especially the lower end of this zone, the 90 to 0 0.95 cent area. If prices do pull back, that could be a nice uh, buy. Technically, I do like that. Um, uh, sell trade if you're looking to buy the Swiss franc, 
and you have uh, you know really pullbacks I would say into these zones I probably have to do that yeah um, pull back into um, these zones areas here uh, the, the Swiss franc uh, Swiss national bank is looking to uh, high crates so I wouldn't necessarily expect prices to really kind of trend anymore. I'd expect prices to really be in a in more of an auction, a sideways or ranging um, moving market from probably from here out and see what happens um, going forward. But those are your pretty much your options. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD um, again. Prices pulling back. If you are a buyer of the U.S. dollar, then this is actually a decent uh, buying opportunity to look to get long. Um, with risk being more off than on, I think dollar does um, the U.S. dollar does benefit from that. So in fact, this is actually a decent buying opportunity to look for any kind of long trades. Um, for a short trade perspective, I definitely look for um, you know these highs. Uh, if I'm looking to buy the Canadian dollar, the one three twos as the uh, that's a really good buying opportunity technically I do like that um, but not really a pair again I'm I'm interested in uh, trading again you've got two central banks um, looking to high crates but um, with the overall risk off environment um, the dollar should probably be more supported out of the two uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar we have had a decent pullback this week uh, on the New Zealand dollar US dollar uh, come up into this supply zone here again above now the uh, the monthly moving fair value so um, again uh, in the risk off environment you would expect the dollar really to um, uh, to strengthen at some point I'm saying it's going to strengthen in that zone but overall these are basically buying opportunities for the US dollar um, the New Zealand dollar um, is struggling a bit out of the commodity currencies is probably the weakest out of the uh, uh, between I guess the Canada and um, Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar um, but I do think that if prices come up to that 64 area I think that might be actually a decent buying opportunity for the US dollar um, but again uh, as long as we maintain our uh, the risk off um, sentiment within the market I think uh, the prices should probably want to um, uh, auction uh, fair value auction or range from uh, this uh, 64 area here to the 60 probably fives if not then you're definitely looking at this area here the 65 50s as an area that prices may want to come to before looking to uh, buy the US dollar in the current environment um, pound dollar pound dollar in the uh, pound at the moment um, looking for short trades um, uh, for me anyway and prices have come up to an area now that I do want to be a buyer of the uh, the, the dollar and uh, at this uh, tw uh, 1.25 um, area uh, this zone here so um, looking at the UK and uh, where are we now so UK inflation heading for 11% readings later this year's food and energy costs rise so uh, rising petrol prices took UK headline inflation another leg higher in June as we expect it to peak above 11% in October but core inflation may have already peaked and that means today's numbers are uh, unlikely to change too many minds when it comes to August's uh, Bank of England's decision uh, we are now we still narrowly expect a 50 basis point hike at that meeting and um so inflation is still rising and um, I think the uh, Bank of England have been given a bit of a pass when it comes to hiking more and 50 at 50 basis points rather than 25 basis points. And this is really because of the month-on-month uh, -month GDP figures that were released um, last week that came out more positive than expected. So I think the bank is taking that as a, as a sign to try to hike more uh, than what they would but there's lots weighing on the um, on the pound risk wise uh, one of them is uh, that traders see losses in pound uh, gilt's market which is basically bonds mark bond market if Liz trust wins so uh, Sunak is the favorite of the market says uh, blue bays uh, hence and traders cite worries over Bank of England pressure and EU relations so uh, the far-reaching economic policies backed by foreign secretary Liz trust would spark losses in UK currency and bond markets according to investors at some top asset um, uh, at the sorry at some of the top asset managers um, 
So I'll read this bit here, which is uh, Truss has made expensive tax cuts uh, a cornerstone of a platform which would imply big increases in UK borrowing. Investors also point to her tough stance on Europe, European relations and promise to review the Bank of England's mandate uh, as other worries, though it's unclear whether she would actually carry out these plans. So there's um, there's a few uh, quite a few uh, worries as far as uh, government policies that will have, you know, uh, I guess uh, uh, asset managers are uh, concerned with when it comes to uh, list trust potentially winning. So uh, with that being said, um, I do think the pound is a short, um, uh, probably starting from now and if prices, you know, go a bit higher than just um, for me anyway I'm looking for uh, more uh, short trades at least definitely in the short term so um, yeah let's see what happens uh, with uh, the British pound um, if you are looking to buy the uh, the dollar then the bottom of the really this um, this range here is going to be uh, I guess it's the auction be definitely something to look for if prices do come back to this uh, 117 area looking for potential buys there but I really want to see something fundamentally change for me to want to be a buyer of the uh, pound against the dollar uh, looking at the euro dollar and the euro dollar has come up into a nice nice area um, uh, which I'm again want to be short on um, it did kind of blow through this uh, supply zone and as I you know say that really anything below um, uh, monthly moving fair value is is really not a trade for me so anyone who tried to get short there you really were getting short you know in an expensive area now prices have come up <clears throat> and uh, now looking for a potential uh, short trade but on the um, on the daily supply uh, zone perspective there really isn't anything until prices or unless prices come up to you know the 104s which is entirely possible for sure and I think that in fact is going to be a very nice trade if prices do come back up come back up to uh, the 10450s uh, to 105 areas uh, but currently as we stand I don't think there's anything um, from a daily uh, supply zone perspective there are um, uh, intraday uh, setups that I really like on here um, but that's beyond the uh, scope of uh, of um, uh, of this video technically but looking at the uh, Europe uh, fundamentally we've got uh, Eurozone activity is suddenly shrinking in recession omen so um, we're seeing this you know really around all the major economies it's not exclusive to just uh, the US or you know the UK it's um, you know there's a there's a I guess a global slowdown um, which is affecting everybody so uh, they say you know a rising tide lifts all boats but also uh, can sink all boats right Anyways, uh, private sector activity in the euro area unexpectedly shrank for the first time since the pandemic lockdowns of early 2021, adding to signs that a recession might be on the horizon. So recessions everywhere, potentially. A, um, a survey of purchasing managers by S&P Global dropped to a 17-month uh, low in July, dipping beneath the levels that signals contraction. The downturn was driven by worsening output among manufacturers and a near uh, stalling of service sector growth economists have had expected a mild expansion so um, again that took um, you know economists by surprise and uh, so for me um, just like the US um, the euro is is potentially heading into a recession but um, I think e Europe again have a lot uh, more problems and bigger problems than the US as we know you know the gas crisis risk um, as well so um, if if Russia and Putin pretty much turn the taps off or don't necessarily restart or restart at a lower capacity than what they were um, giving before then it's going to really affect um, the whole of Europe and um, would you know send the euro a lot lower we've, we've been reading a lot of uh, bank analysis in the um, in the private members group and um, they're pretty much all saying the same thing but the euro could actually be a decent buy if um, you know the uh, fears about um, the taps the gas taps being turned off uh, don't come to fruition so you you know there's there's targets of potentially uh, 107s uh, you know around these highs 107s being around here uh, the euro could rally uh, too so again there is 
it could go either way. It depends on how the market kind of takes it. But if um, if if the uh, you, if basically uh, Putin doesn't turn off the taps and keeps uh, the, uh, the the gas flowing, then Europe will end, uh, the, and the euro will uh, may avoid a, a recession sooner, and uh, that will uh, cause the euro to rally. But uh, none of us know until really the news actually comes out. So um, let's see what happens uh, with that. But for now, my bias is still to the short side, but uh, there is a definitely a contrarian and an opportunity to get long on the uh, the euro at the moment. So either way you look at it, any pullbacks, that could be a nice buying opportunity for the euro. Um, or if you're not obviously in the, uh, the group and you're uh, looking at supply zones and you're looking for sell trade, you'd really have to wait for prices to come up. Uh, here uh, and the reason why I said if you're not in the group is because again there's an intraday setup that I really like currently and um, but again that's beyond the scope of this video uh, looking at the Australian dollar US dollar and uh, again a bit of a pullback um, decent um, uh, pullback not really a pair I'm interested in in buying for the moment although I do like the Australian dollar as a buy um, but not really against the uh, US dollar. Currently, if, if there is a pullback, I think that's very nice uh, technically uh, for, a, for a buy trade. Any sell trades, and let me just uh, zoom in a little bit. Try and maybe, yeah. I think any sell trades right now, or even at the, 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 the 70, around the 70 cent area, I think is gonna be decent for a sell trade. Uh, technically, um, again, in the risk off environment, the Australian dollar should, uh, be the weaker out of the two and the US dollar should be more supported. Um, Australian dollar, Japanese yen, um, we're getting you know a bit of a pullback. Prices did kind of peak above that supply zone there, um, but not actually quite into the, the higher area. I'm gonna basically delete this and uh, draw a supply zone from there. And not the strongest area of supply to be fair, but um, it's there and you also have um, higher high there so we do have price in between this supply and this demand zone daily supply and demand um, again although I understand that um, uh, from a risk sentiment perspective the yen should be the one to strengthen I do think my bias um, I, should have to think, but my bias is still to buy the Australian dollar fundamentally because um, especially if it comes down to the uh, 91 cent area um, is I think is going to be a decent buy for the Australian dollar. Um, I'm still not, you know, convinced that the um, until the Bank of Japan really start to get a bit hawkish um, in their monetary policy, I'm going to be a buyer of the Australian dollar. And um, and yeah, I think that's where we are. But I think the top end, uh, 96, 97 area, is decent for a uh, sell trade um, if you're looking to buy the Japanese yen. Um, technically, but fundamentally. My bias is definitely still to buy the Australian dollar and gold, 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 uh, um, a nice uh, pullback, a very nice pullback to really the bottom of this um, of this long term auction, right? So prices, if you understand what you're looking at, which is really an auction, prices are auctioning, and um, this was a this has been a bargain price, right? It's been a bargain uh, back in 2021. Um, a few times, several times, the prices went to the upside. Is it gonna be a bargain here again? Um, who knows, but um, we've got an expensive, sorry, an expensive area at the top. Yeah, that's expensive. And this is, you know, cheap or bargain prices at the bottom. And in between that is fair value. And what basically buyers and sellers are saying that over, a, you know, a, 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 two year period, two and a half year period. Um, this has been expensive and this has been um, a bargain price for, for gold, right? So for me, a decent area to look for buy trades. Um, there could be a potential stop hunt around that 1660s um, area around here. Um, and if there is a stop hunt around there, I think that's gonna be an absolute uh, steal for the, uh, uh, for, the um, for gold. And um, again, looking at uh, 
just uh, some, uh, some fundamental news is that gold at the mercy of King Dollar uh, slumps to lowest since uh, March 2021. So City Group and UBS see uh, trough this year before 2023 recovery. And I was saying this last week, that I believe ultimately um, the uh, the bank's financial institution, in fact, I say I believe, but um, uh, it's on record, uh, the central banks are increasing their gold buyers and remember they buy for the for the long term right for the medium to long term so this for them is an absolute bargain if they believe that next year if we're going into a potential recession in 2023 um and the federal reserve have to you know uh probably potentially start to look to cut rates and uh, central banks around the world are going to be cutting rates um and the dollar starts to potentially weaken um that should in fact um, you know, be positive for gold again over the next uh, 12 months. So uh, this is going to look like an absolute bargain price uh, potentially. So uh, for me, my definitely my bias is to is to go long uh, on gold. It just depends on the timing when I think um, I'm going to probably start to establish some some the long trades on uh, gold if the right setup uh, does come along. Anyways, if you're looking to sell gold. If you are looking to sell gold, let me just get rid of some of this, uh, some of the, um, the drawing, uh, and uh, yeah, I think any any sell trades, decent, right there. Looking for short trades if you are uh, looking to you know continue to buy the dollar and sell gold, right? Because they typically work uh, inversely, but um, but yeah, my bias is to the, to the upside, so any pullbacks, especially down to that 17 round number, uh, 1700 round number to 1690, 1680s at the lows and even b below that. Anyways guys, um, that's it for this week. I hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care, all the best.